I mean, really, in any Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, I just, I just need three things. I need it to be set in Texas. I need there to be a, a really, really big fucking chainsaw. And I need there to be a massacre. What's up guys, welcome to all the spoilers for the brand new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I stated this, you know, months ago when uh, it was rumored that this movie was coming out that uh, I'm excited and this movie could be completely horrible or it could be great. But either way, I'm excited. It doesn't matter. Once again, the fans are divided, you know, like, like Halloween Kills. I think everybody kind of liked or loved Scream. Okay, I'll say that. Maybe it's just a franchise thing. When it comes to Halloween and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, with a lot of the movies, th th there's a great divide, but especially with, with this franchise, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And if everybody kind of has the same opinion on a movie, that means the movie's usually bad, like, like Leatherface. There wasn't anybody shouting at the mountaintops for Leatherface, you know? They were all like, either, yeah, or, I'll never watch that again. When it's the other way, when the, the movie has this great freaking Moses ocean divide, then uh, it could be amazing. And I think that's the reaction to this movie that I've seen anyway. Look at, looking in my comments section, I saw so many comments stating this movie is the biggest piece of garbage and I don't know how any of you could ever like this monstrosity. And then there's the other side of it There's like, Dude, it's a fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. What the hell do you want? There's bloody, gory carnage. There's the baddest ass Leatherface imaginable. Characters? Who gives a shit about characters in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? My voice just raised like three octaves. It's crazy. But this franchise will drive people nuts. It really will. And to those that are, I guess, on that other side that hated this movie with a purple passion, I'm just curious, like, are you a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, big fan? Do you know what you're getting yourself into when you go to these movies? Maybe you are. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you are completely a massive fan of the movies, but this just wasn't your cup of tea. I don't know how, but it wasn't. So anyway, this is my spoiler review. I'm going to go through a lot of the stuff that I couldn't talk about in the non-spoiler review. I think more than any other Texas movie, this does have a lot of uh, spoilery type things. I actually had to be kind of careful with this because the uh, the main stars of this movie, let's jump into them, Melody and Lila. I loved these two characters. I just watched this movie for a second time right before this. And I found myself really rooting for these two characters uh, for different reasons. It reminded me kind of of Rachel and Jamie from Halloween 4. And you guys know how I just I'm constantly defending those two characters, shouting it out the mountaintop, and it kind of reminded me of something. I love Jamie Lloyd, but I think I love Jamie Lloyd when she is with Rachel the most. You know, when she's not with Rachel, there's something missing. And I guess you could say the same thing with Rachel. Rachel needs Jamie, Jamie needs Rachel. So even if you brought Daniel Harris back to the franchise as Jamie Lloyd, it could be freaking amazing. I would be going apeshit. Maybe something would be missing, you know? So I think it was smart of them to do that with this movie. You know, another comparison would be the brother and sister duo uh, in uh, Strangers Pray at Night. They needed each other. They were perfect together. You know, there was this chemistry. These two sisters, Melody and Lila, have a lot of chemistry with each other. And one thing that really made me set up in my chair, and I never set up in my chair in terms of characters with a Texas movie, okay? I mean, even going back to the first movie. The first movie's iconic, but not because of the characters. For everything else around the characters. The characters are kind of forgettable. Well, I guess, that's unfair because Franklin is definitely memorable. And Sally does have her place in horror lore. You know, as far as like a final girl completely going apeshit and losing her mind, her performance at the end of the first movie will always be remembered. You know, there's no other performance like it. And I think you could say that some actresses have tried to copy that, like maybe Scout Taylor Compton from Rob Zombie's Halloween, but it just didn't work. Maybe because it felt so authentic and real in the original, 
not just because of her performance, Marilyn Burns, rest in peace, her performance, but also just because of everything that had happened before when she's sitting in that chair. Wow, it, that's heavy stuff. It felt real. The whole movie felt real. So jumping back over though to Lila and Melody, Lila was a victim of a school shooting. This made me set up in my chair like, oh shit, this is interesting actually. And it, it perfectly fits in with today's culture. You know, we've had school shootings uh, like the last 20 years, more than any other time in history. With today's PC, I call it Twitter culture because I think a lot of this stuff starts on Twitter because that's the platform where everybody has a voice, including myself, and everybody wants to be heard. I need to be heard, and I and I hate to say this, but I need to be offended. I think some people just need to be offended. These days, with any new movie, there is a group out there that they want to go looking for something called woke. This movie's no different. I literally had a few people in my comments stating that I didn't I didn't like this movie because it was woke. Are you serious? This movie was not woke. It was actually anti-woke. You know, and that's a movement too. That's where you get yourself in trouble because if you pick a side, you're fucked anyway. But this movie was anti-woke because at the end of the movie, on the bus, it's a it's a direct shot at cancel culture. You can't cancel Leatherface, you know, because he's of a different time period and this shit didn't exist back then. So that event is going to stamp this movie at this certain time. And that's, that's okay. I think that's great, actually. I was fist bumping and devil horning and everything you can imagine during that bus scene. It was so damn awesome. So having this character that survived a school shooting, uh, right away at the, at the beginning, that kind of justifies her reaction to gun violence. It just does, okay? You can call that woke, but I think woke is more of a superficial thing. If there's nothing below the surface, then yeah, I guess you can call it woke. If it feels like it's checking a box. But no, this was a character in the story that survived the school shooting. And so here comes this other character by the name of Richter. Uh, and right away at the beginning, automatically I thought, oh shit, this is gonna be a very superficial type of thing. He's going to stay that way throughout this whole movie and just be, um, you know, pro-gun, Texas, NRA, all that stuff. And these two are never going to see eye to eye. And thankfully, they had some good writers at the table on this because these two characters actually had a moment in the movie where they started gelling a little bit. And he was seeing from her point of view why she was the way she was. And it wasn't forced and it wasn't shoved down your throat, you know? They were very smart about just touching on it, just giving you uh, just enough. And, and letting Leatherface still take center stage. You know, the, the chainsaw carnage and all that stuff still takes center stage. That's the mistake you get in some of these movies of today where they beat you over the head with the agenda and the agenda has nothing to do with the actual movie. This was actually part of the story, okay? But it didn't get in the way. And I, I, I actually ended up liking both those characters, Lila and Richter, quite a bit. Richter ends up, you know, really giving his life for uh, Melody and that crazy scene where he's fighting Leatherface and Leatherface kicks his knee in and it, it kicks backwards and you know it's so many scenes like that where you're just like oh damn that's they're not playing around in terms of the violence but then you got her sister Melody who is just more of the protective role you know always looking out for Lila she's the one that had this dream this vision to create this new community and uh, that's great I think you know it's great when young people uh, kind of take the baton and get motivated and try to create something new. I think that's awesome because I think there's a message there too. Like if you're always busy being productive, doing something, then you don't have time to go on Twitter and get offended by shit. I have a full-time job. I have a full-time YouTube career. I call it full-time because I spend almost just as much doing this as I do my full-time job. And then I have a family. So I don't have time to be offended kind of works out. Now I'm gonna save the final act for a little later in the review. Uh, jumping back to the beginning, they kind of set up where Leatherface has been all this time. You know, he had this, um, I guess, house mother, this orphanage. So right after the events of the first movie, he ends up going to this orphanage where he is raised by this lady and he loves her. You can tell he loves her. 
and her house is being taken from her. So she's kind of an innocent victim in this thing. And, and Melody sees that later in the movie when she finds out that, oh shit, she still did own the property. And so she has a heart attack and one of the, the young people go with her because they feel horrible about the situation. And uh, once they get out into this, uh, it's like a daisy field, like a dead daisy field. I just posted this, oh, funny enough, on Twitter. Uh, that uh, as soon as that wrist snapped, I knew we were in business. <laughs> Before the wrist snap, I was unsure. Even like, oh God, this is gonna be a bad movie. But then after that scene, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, this isn't a PG-13 type of Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie because this went to Netflix, so you don't know what you're gonna get at first, ratings-wise. But damn, he cracks his wrist and then he stabs him with his own wrist bone. I've never seen a kill like that before. Kind of reminded me of Halloween 4, the ambulance scene in Halloween 4, you know, that, that, that little massacre. This was kind of the same thing. And then the gun goes off, kills the driver. But the real kicker here is, you know, Leatherface, he's with, let's just call him his mother even though it's not his biological mother. Uh, he ends up outside the van and he, you know, he loves her so much and he literally rips her face off. This is how deranged and crazy Leatherface is. And he wears her face as a, a way of respecting her. You know, as I was watching this movie though, it goes by so damn quick. Before I knew it, we were already at the bus scene. I couldn't wait to talk about that scene just because of how freaking crazy it was. You know, you got the cancel culture mob there and Leatherface ain't having it. And at first I thought, you know, it was just gonna be really quick and he'd like kill a couple of them. Then we, you know, we'd see a wide shot uh, from the outside of the bus and then blood splatter on the windows. But no, no, they were, there was a few deaths in here that were pretty gnarly actually. Le Leatherface picking people up with a chainsaw. Uh, the one where he like cracks the, the chainsaw against the shoulder and then down on the guy. The girl coming out of the window and he saws her in half. I saw people were like complaining of CGI and yeah, I guess you could have practical effects and it'd be awesome in that scene, but sometimes, as long as it still looks real, I don't mind it being CGI. Yeah, of course we all prefer practical effects, but if it looks real enough and more importantly, if I'm involved in the story and it doesn't like stick out like a sore thumb, like, oh shit, that's CGI, it just took me out of the scene. No, that doesn't happen at all. I'm right there with it the whole way. This might be like one of the best kill scenes I've seen in a long time, you know? I, I don't know if it would make like top 20 kill scenes of all time, probably not, but damn, it was a no holds bar scene. It seems like this might've been like the start of the idea of this movie. Let's, if you wanted to plan it or, or workshop it that way, let's start with just a great kill. What if Leatherface was on a bus full of cancer culture idiots and he just freaking flays all of them and then they kind of work the story around that. It worked for me because that, that is the best scene in the movie. Now let's talk about Sally Hardesty. I, I kind of just kind of glazed over her in the uh, non-spoiler review. Uh, she's definitely in the con section, but I didn't really explain myself fully. And I think the big thing is she does feel so tacked on. The movie isn't really centered around her as much and that's fine. There's no like real preparation along the way or anything. There's no moments where you get to see, I guess, what life has been like for Sally along the way. And, and honestly, just kind of thinking in real time here, I don't even know if that would have been, you know, enough. I don't know if we really wanted a return of Sally in the first place. And also, I love Marilyn Burns. Marilyn Burns is a horror icon, you know? I think she is one of the most underrated final girls out there. I don't think she's like the greatest final girl ever, but what that actress had to go through in that shoot for that movie might be one of the toughest shoots in horror history. It's legendary. It is nice for them to respect the character like that, but without Marilyn Burns actually playing the part, and obviously she can't because she passed away a few years ago, I just think this actress that played her and not nothing against her she did the best she could it's one of those situations in my opinion where you just can't really feel those shoes you know i always see somebody else playing that part she is uh, imprinted in uh, the role of sally hardesty for eternity and for me it just doesn't really work if if marilyn were alive and healthy and able to play that part 
I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more, you know, and I think you guys would have too, but there is a disconnect there because it's not Maryland, you know? So I, I definitely didn't want to disrespect uh, Maryland and the character. And I don't think they make the character look bad. I mean, hell, it's pretty shocking and a surprise when Leatherface kills her. He literally sticks the, you know, the big showdown with her and Leatherface at the end and he freaking thrusts the chainsaw in her, lifts her up. But she goes out in a blaze of glory, I guess. And she does get to get a shot off at him, which by the way, no way in hell. I mean, she literally was just sawed in half. So it is a cool moment though at the end when Lila does put on her hat, kind of a, I don't know if you'd call it a passing of the torch, even though they do kind of set up a sequel, which that will not happen. Again, I'm, I'm calling it right now, timestamp it. There's no way they're going to make a sequel to this movie because they never make sequels to Texas, like true sequels that pick up, except for the beginning, which wasn't a sequel. It was a prequel. The beginning is the closest we've ever come to kind of sticking to a continuity with the same tone and, and even returning uh, actors. Now, let's talk about the, the final act. I kind of touched on it with, with Sally returning, but really it's the big showdown between Leatherface, Lila, and Melody. I think the biggest thing is that I found myself rooting big time for those two characters. There's that nice moment in the car after the accident where Melody, she can't break free and she's telling Lila, go save yourself, you know? And there's a really nice heartfelt moment. Uh, and eventually Lila, you know, she has to leave because Leatherface is, is coming. And so when Leatherface comes, she has this moment with Leatherface where she apologizes to him. She says, I'm sorry for what we did to your mother. For a moment, I like felt myself like tearing up in a freaking Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. It was a nice, tender moment. You know, she feels bad for this guy that's about to kill her, you know, for the situation that he's in. And I've always said that Leatherface is kind of a sympathetic killer. You know, he's not all there mentally. You know, I've had this debate too about if the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a slasher or not because Leatherface isn't stalking anybody. And to me, stalking is a big part of slashers. Having said that, this movie is a slasher for sure. Leatherface is definitely coming after those people. So that that's another debate to be had. That was a nice moment. I really did like that moment. And it made me really care even more for Melody as a character and Lila. You know, you have that nice moment. Of course, Melody gets out and she comes up, she gets the chainsaw, and she strikes Leatherface, and he falls down. So you think these two sisters are going to live. You know, nice, happy ending. But then, of course, at the very end, I was not ready for this. <laughs> They're in the car, you know, talking, and then all of a sudden, boom, Leatherface is right behind them. He pulls Melody out of the car. Lila is, I, was that like an autopilot car? Like what the, do those, do they have those now? Are we in demolition man time? Lila's watching her sister from afar. Leatherface is holding her head and he cuts her head off. It was pure insanity. And it was really the icing on the cake. I loved the ending, even though I loved Melody as a character, but let's face it, there's no way they would bring both those characters back anyway. In the end, I guess Leatherface kind of wins. Like get the hell out of my town. So Levi's going crazy. So I guess we're going to chop the, uh, or I guess saw the review right here. I really enjoyed this. I'm still, still trying to figure out where it's going to go on my ranking. I was putting together my list this morning and man, this is a very consistent franchise in terms of quality of movies. At least in my opinion, there's a lot of good movies in this franchise. So man, I, this movie is almost dead tied with like two or three other movies. So it's so hard to get a, a proper ranking. But uh, anyway, guys, Go ahead and uh, uh, let me know what you guys think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 in the comments. Also, what was your favorite kill? You know, mine was the wrist kill, but what was your favorite kill in the movie? Also, be sure to come over to Kill Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays, we do Free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on my social, support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dumb out.